Hello everyone, nice to meet you all. I'm Eddie Hong, in charge of the technical management of the building product in Midas. The topic of presentation today is a case study on the behavior of building structure considering soil structure interaction. Today, I will abbreviate soil structure interaction as SSI. There could be a lot of topics related to SSI. SSI covers a wide range of fields to study, and there are lots of SSI related thesis and practices that need to be run. Today, among them, I would like to talk about the behavior of structure based on SSI analysis using the MIDAS program. After today's webinar, you will be able to learn about the overall understanding of SSI analysis practice and understand the analysis process of the program. So let's get into the case study. The table of contents consists of the following three steps. In step one, I will explain the theoretical background of SSI analysis and the reason behind why SSI analysis should be done. In step two, I will explain the types of SSI analysis and briefly demonstrate how the soil model should be applied when analyzing SSI. In step three, we will explain in detail how to apply SSI analysis in practice through 3D integrated model using MIDAS software such as MIDAS Gen and MIDAS GTSNX. Let me start from step one, the theoretical background of SSI analysis. Generally, when the seismic design of structure is made, Structural engineers are ignoring the ductility of foundation ground when they go through an analysis of the foundation and upper structure. This indicates that their seismic design ignores a complex mutual mechanical behavior among the foundation, soil, and upper structure. Of course, in the design criteria, these kinds of factors are being considered based on the historical data of various existing research. Although the current design method is generally recognized as a safe method to use, unexpected structure problems could occur in a complex structure system like high-rise buildings if behavior generated by mutual interaction between ground and structure is not accurately identified. In structures found on non-rigid formations, the soil flexibility influences structural response and vice versa. This phenomenon is called soil structure interaction, characteristic of earthquakes vary depending on the dynamic interaction between the ground and upper structure. In other words, when seismic waves reach the ground where the structure is located, the structure generates various dynamic behavior depending on the structure system and the shape. As a result, newly generated waves affect the ground and the dynamic response of the structure. SSI is one of several factors influencing response to seismic loads, which include source travel path effect and site response effect. There are largely four building related cases where SSI analysis can be applied. The first case would be the application of SSI analysis on the underground world of high-rise buildings such as the wall of the underground parking lot. The second case would be a flexible foundation structure. 
This is an analytic method that uses the spring stiffness value when we analyze SSI. The third case would be about the PY spring model, which considers lateral rigidity of the ground to the file as a PY curve. The last case would cover the method of analyzing fully modeled ground as a continuous 3D model. Through today's webinar, I will demonstrate the method of calculating various spring stiffness related to flexible foundation. Then I will also explain the spring model considering the PY curve of the pile and continuum full models regarding direct analysis through Midas Gen and GTSNX. Let's move on to the step 2, types of analysis and soil model. Structural engineers use spring to represent the soil as we see. For a given column load, the foundation reflects representing the soil settlement and the spring represents the soil pressure. On the other hand, geotechnical engineers model the soil as a continuum either as an elastic space or an inelastic space. To determine the corresponding soil settlement and stresses due to the column load. For the case of the rigid raft, on the raft hand side, we have the structural approach of the Rinker's springs model and it's a single set of Rinker's springs which is uniform settlement and uh, uniform stress distribution. However, in the geotechnical approach, as you can see, the settlements may be constant, but the stress distribution is not. The high stress is developing at the edge of the raft. Now, by definition of the springs, and the springs at the edge of the raft have to be higher than the springs at the center of the raft to capture the stress behavior while you have higher stresses but the same settlement. Now, in the case of the flexible raft on the left hand side, you have the case of the single set of strings which gives you uniform settlement. However, Elastic theory shows that the stress distribution under the raft is going to be constant as the post that we had in the previous case, but the settlements are going to vary. The highest settlements are carrying at the center of the raft and the smallest settlement carrying at the edge. Again, based on the definition of the wrinkle springs, you will expect higher springs at the edge and the lowest at the center. So what is the solution for this? The solution is that we should not use one zone of springs, but at least two zones with the outermost springs being higher than the springs at the center. Now for stiff soil, outer springs may increase 30% to 40% compared to the springs at the center whereas the, at the soft soil we will have to increase two or three times compared to the springs in the center. Again, the stiff soil and the soft soil are relative to the foundation stiffness and the loading and even rock would need to use two zones of springs. The most ideal way to consider SSI is to analyze the entire system of ground, foundation, and upper structure through model. But in the case, we have to go through a complex analytic process and also the credibility of the research could be questioned if the analytics opinion is involved making it difficult to apply in practice. However, as of the latest trend, structural engineers and geotech engineers collaborate to handle the work, or structural engineers integrate the ground modeling to do their SSI analysis.
This form of analysis will be increasingly considered in practice in the future. These are four models of traditional model approach that could be used the most as a form of source spring in practical project. Four models of approach are as follows. Subgrade reaction model method, two parameter model, modify two parameter models, and multi-layered models. Now, let me go on to the explanation of each method. First, subgrade reaction module method. This method could be easily used in hands-on project. Therefore, it is used for seismic design or foundation structure design. A lot of formulas such as Rinker, Terzaghi, Berghoff, and Bors, which are historically famous, are used to calculate the modulus of subgrade reaction. In fact, if we apply the subgrade reaction modules method in Midas chain, you can use the second and third functions as shown on the screen. This surface spring support function can set up nodal spring support at once by automatically calculating the ranks or the surface area. This is the key e equation that we should take a look at coefficient of source spring at node equal effective area automatically calculated multiply input modulus of subgrade reaction. For instance, if we input value 10,000 km per meter and if the effective area of 17 nodes is 0 0.25 square meters, the final applied value of nodal spring would be 2,500 kN per meter. We can either use point spring or elastic link to convert nodal spring. Elastic link works as a beam element while the beam element calculates the actual stiffness EA and longitudinal stiffness EI using the material and the surface area as an input, elastic link directly use the calculate stiffness. It substitutes the characteristics of the ground via element and the fixed end is placed at the bottom of the node. In addition, compression only element characteristic like soil is well considered in the process of this method which is usually used for the soil spring. Although the type of point spring in the screen is set to linear, you can also set it as compression only. Now, I will go on to the second and third method, which are two-parameter and modified two-parameter models. The two-parameter model has small stiffness because there exist overlaps with the foundation in the middle. The theory here is that the settlements towards the edge are close to zero. The modified two-parameter model applies the theory that the soil rigidity should be increased as the settlement is close to zero at the edge. Therefore, we either increase the input value of the stiffness or add additional stiffness value for practical model. Now, I will introduce some research cases and applicable thesis of two parameter models as mentioned earlier. Since we are running out of time, let's skip the detailed explanation of these theories and move on to how we could apply it. Here I have lined up the proposal formulas of three soil models. 
I will further explain about it and examples of each model's parameter on the next page. All right, uh, let's assume that the parameter value we know so modulus, foundation depth, and Poisson ratio. If we apply each of it in personal model and color and naming model, the final value of the spring data is just as you see here. First, C1 value in the personal model equals to modulus of subgrad reaction value. If the direction of modulus sub subgrad reaction value is set to global jet direction, then the C2 value would be the Sears resistant value of the X and Y direction. Color and naming model is good model to apply the modified two parameter models. And in addition, it could be good model to apply if your model has a multi-layer. In the color and naming model, the C2 value becomes the sear resistant value of the average concept. Also, the line spring K value of the middle layer and the additional stiffness value of the outer edges are estimated and applied to the model in multi layer. Now, I will perform Midas Gen to apply Pestanon model to the first, second, and third model. Then, I will input Spring support by applying color and naming equation to the fourth model as it is multi -rayered. I will demonstrate how we should set up uh, boundary conditions through modeling. The following four models used in this demonstration all have the same default size of 7 by 7 meter on the raft putting. We will use point spring and surface spring functions. Click the surface spring icon and check the default option convert to nodal spring. We will now input the modulus of subgrade reaction value below. I have input the KZ value as 2899 kN per cubic meter considering the global X, Y and Z axis. Let's define kx and y value as 724, which is one quarter of kz. One quarter may be based on the experience value given as a uh, standard. In order to check the spring value, right click and click table. You will be able to see subgrade reaction we had input a while ago. If we move to the raft, we can check the convert uh, point spring stiffness value of each SDX, SDY, and SDZ condition. We are going to click the surface spring icon again, try to convert the function through LS link. We will set type as a linear and choose global jet negative as a direction. Just like how we did previously, we will input the 2899 value again. Lastly, we will input the length of the rink as 1 meter and click apply after selecting everything. Now we will be able to see the modeling with point spring applied. If we simply use the ls-link function, nodes are automatically created at a distance of 1 meter, and elastic links are formed between each node. Right-click on the work tree to look through a table. Link's stiffness value is expressed as sdx.
Next, let's move on to the third model to assign the point spring value manually, not automatically. We will first input the stiffness value of each direction. In addition, we will set the set stiffness value for the torque as a fixed. Now, we have to input the stiffness value of spring for multi-rayer. Assuming the thickness of each rayer being 1 meter, I have copied the values nodes in the uh, jet negative direction. This time, we will use the elastic function to input values. Input 1440 kN per meter in SD jet direction. And except for the SD jet, all the other directions would be set to be in a rigid condition among the six degree of freedom. Let's zoom in the modeling, then check on the copy function and copy it to the X direction. If you want to apply one half of the value for the next layer, change the setting like this. In addition, if you want to apply additional spring to the nodes at the very end, check off the copy function and connect an elastic link to the nodes you want. I will set up the node where you could see better. When setting the uh, elastic link manually, you must set the support condition of the node at the very bottom as fixed. I will introduce you to uh, the other functions. This is a method for stiffness value using first deformation function in point spring. This function used the way of input multilinear type for point spring. The tensile stiffness and compressive stiffness can be defined symmetrically or asymmetrically. I will further explain the details for uh, this function in the pile modeling tutorial session. Next, we will move on to the general spring support function. This function inputs node stiffness in 6x6 stiffness matrix, which includes stiffness related to the other uh, degree of freedom based on node local coordinate system or global coordinate system. This function generally used uh, boundary spring element to model, not including pile model in the foundation. In summary, you can understand that uh, we often use it when expressing the stiffness of pile at a node without modeling the pile directly as a frame. So far, I have introduced the traditional way of soil modeling, assigning the input value for rigidity. This way of modeling is still a simple and fast method that many structural engineers apply in their project. However, this kind of traditional modeling method does not reflect accurate shear and characteristic of nonlinear material. Also, it has the disadvantages that it does not reflect characteristic of multi-soil layer, adjacent structures and soil. Therefore, thanks to the development of computer and software, the latest trend these days is to apply fully integrated modeling when analyzing SSI. As this way of analysis accurately 
estimate the effect of soil and structure, it is a frequently applied hands-on project. From now on, I will use two kinds of MIDAS software to demonstrate how you could practically do the most accurate and the fast SSI analysis through various tutorials and case studies. In step 3, just as I mentioned earlier, I will now show you SSI analysis examples which apply the integrate model. The first model I will explain about the process of completing the modeling. We will make the simple model of file in Midas Gen and export it to the Midas GTS. Then we will complete the soil modeling with 3D solid. The second model will be about the process of SSI analysis through an integrated model which consists of layered structures and pile modeling. Finally, in the third model, I will be explaining about the how we should form the soil model with the basement wall and raft model that has underground layer with the plate model. And then I would like to further explain in detail the final SSI analysis process considering the construction stage analysis in GTSNX. I will go through this tutorial with uh, simple pile modeling. The diameter of this round pile is set as 0.5 meter and currently the support condition of each node has been input. At the very bottom, we can see now the degree of freedom is constrained in the dy, dz, and rz directions. And the rest of the nodes is set to in a dy direction. Each of the nodal nodes has in a input 10 kN to the x direction. Now, let's export to GTSNX in the form of text file format called MXT file. You can see here that the MXT file is in a text editor form immediately. Now, let's open the GTS model and import mxd file as a new file. If you open an mxd file, you can check the 1D element by going to the tree menu, model tab. And you can check boundary conditions on the analysis tab. You can see an input have been, have been imported successfully. And also you can see, you can check how nodal rows has been imported for the 10 kN through the edit function in the dialog. Next, it's time to make a soil model by 3D by using a solid function in the form of a 3D box or using bedding plan wizard. Some engineers use a train geometry maker functions to make a model. However, in this tutorial, I will import the 3D CAD file and directly import a solid geometry body to the program. As you can see, it has been imported already. If you use the 3 cat file, you can easily import solid geometry form to where you want it to be.
back to the model tab you can check how geometry is added to the tree menu since the mesh is not generated yet we will generate one by assigning its property the following step is to add a soil property materials are added through create functions here in a more column from db after checking the materials for e value poison ratio and nonlinear property click the ok button at the bottom since it is a tutorial we will just simply add a property of one single solid geometry now let's open a property dialog and change the name solid format in the tree menu is shown as not used because the mesh would be not generated yet therefore to set it up we will use the generate group function click the 3d button and set the size of the solid as one meter in the auto solid mesh sheet and choose the hybrid measure option other advanced options are to be used when needed back to where we were finally click the ok button to generate the mesh you can see how one by one meters mesh has been generated successfully in the mesh function at the bottom you can check whether the mesh is formed well through check on and off if necessary you can use the interface function to set the contact condition between the pile and the soil using line elements or other functions like extract function to set a uh, edge of the line or face in this tutorial you can see that the support conditions are set in the program as auto in a fixed and using constraint auto function on the outermost part of the ground without utilizing the contact conditions And additionally, the fixed support will be assigned at the very bottom node. Except for the very bottom, the other outermost nodes which are set to have the pin condition generated. And then we will input the gravity and self weight load of the soil property and pile. These additional input values are ultimately used for the nonlinear analysis. We will set the load step 
as increment 5 to divide each step to perform nonlinear static analysis. Press the solve to perform the analysis as we want to find out the stiffness value of the force deformation, stiffness value of files each node through GTSNX. We will first check the TX translation value of the load factor 1, which corresponds to the increment 5. Let's check the value of each node using the probe function. You can see how the max value is about 3 mm. You might be curious, here you can check the value of the pile part that meets with the sole nodes. And now, by using the export function, you can extract the load value of each node to the x direction, which corresponds with the first and displacement value. And that would be the stiffness. We will use the export nodal results function. Likewise, this file format is in a txt text format. We will import these result values using the import function in Chan. Here you can check that. The first information graph, that is the function value and the spring support value corresponding to the node. Now let's check how the values are imported using this force function. The dx and fx first value are expressed in a graph. We can analyze the slope as k value, that is the stiffness of spring k value. The analysis will be repeatedly performed for convergence between the two programs. I wrote a simple step tutorial for those new to tutorial or who have just used Gen for the first time. After the webinar, please try to do the modeling yourself and practice SSI analysis. I will skip the detailed explanation in the PPT and move on for those who signed up for the webinar. Please download this document as a PDF file. This page is about setting the output data to pass the spring stiffness value when exporting from GTX-NX to MidasGen. I have explained how to set force displacement and how data is moved by what principle. Then let's check the result on the raft is the institute analysis TX displacement result, which is an 
analysis of the original state of the ground. We may set it or may not be set, but it is often done by engineers. The result on the right side is the TX displacement by setting increments 5 of the nonlinear static analysis. The TX displacement of road factor 1 of the last step can be checked for each node. These are important data. Please remind these values. This graph extracts the results and imports them as first deformation function, stiffness value through minus gen. In in situ analysis step one, displacement and first are all zero in the original ground state. And you can see that step two to step six are displayed as many as the number of increments. The final first becomes 10 km and the last step displacement is the deformation value of the dx. We checked on the previous page. This is marked with the red box. Additionally, to show the k slope for a nonlinear, the load value is modified to 200 kN. I tried to obtain a graph by applying a load only to the top node to obtain more accurate data and obtain nonlinearity characteristics. The analysis was performed to the 300 steps. The result obtained in this way is slightly nonlinear. To show various examples and to help you understand, we have provided additional examples. Next, we will actually perform SSI analysis through a practical model. This is the detail of the model to be used in the study. This time, we will go through a tutorial with the model that was actually applied practical project. There exist piles under the footing of this model. If you look at the story information, a total slab is considered as a diaphragm in the setting. Now, let's use the export function to export MXT file to the GTSNX and then we will import the MXT file. It is pretty much the same process that we are going through just like how we modeled the pile in the first tutorial. You can see here that the beam load input from Midas Gen, mesh plate model, pile model, elastic link settings, and rigid link with the pile cap is successfully meshed and imported to the program. Let's go to the analysis tab. You can also see here that each load case of static load is successfully imported to the program as well. Because of time limit, I have imported a meshed model file that has material property input. One D, two D, and three D property are set. An additional solar mesh model is generated. Using the function that converts 
a node into the point, all the nodes of the plate and the pile element are converted into the point. Therefore, we have a total of 1416 points set, the, set in the program. This is geometry of surface and solid part. Next, in the analysis tab, you can see how an auto constraint function has been used to set a constraint on the outermost nodes as a pin condition. After performing analysis in GTSNX and the result of the static load case that was imported back to the program is set as base CBGLCB2 load case. So when you use GTSNX, a construction stage analysis has to be performed generally. In this case study, after we perform nonlinear analysis, we will focus on the stiffness value of each node which we consider the most important. You can change the setting of the construction stage by using, uh, by using functions like analysis control and parameters. This part will be covered in detail next case study. Go to the result tab of the work tree after performing the analysis. You will be able to first see how in situ analysis of current soil has been performed. Then you can also check the SSI analysis results of each increment step by step. This is the translation value from point spring to soil. You can see the load factor of the final step, that is a total translation value of increment 10 in step 1. We have to extract values of current points, that is value of about 1400 forces and deformation. We need to perform analysis once more to export nodal results. We will export to Gen again, just like how we repeat the process of analysis in the first tutorial. As the final value is not covered yet, the load set will be analyzed once more to extract a value of stiffness. After you import the file from Gen again, you can see that there are over 3000 functions imported to the program. This is because we now have input function of three different translation degrees of freedom to dx, dy, and dz directions. The new value of stiffness will be used again when we perform analysis to find different kinds of value for each node. Then you could end the analysis when the final value of convergence comes up. Let's summarize the process when performing SSI analysis on integrated model using Midas Gen and Midas GTSNX with Pile Spring.
Here is the last case study model in this webinar. And it is a property for each floor to be applied to the soil model. For this case, we are going to apply the soil springs on the raft and then run the analysis to give it a quick inspection in terms of re results in MetasGen. Lastly, exporting compared results to the uh, GTSNS software models in 3D. We are going to apply them surface springs. In our case, we are only looking at flat or raft foundations. So we will use the approach surface spring. We see we can keep it as plate solid so we can keep it as a uh, plate and the spring types can also be linear compression or tension only we will do compression only and we will do it in the negative vertical direction and here is where i can apply the value this k value we will already uh, talked about is modulus of subgrade reaction. We would apply a value simulating it would be soft soil or sand. We will use 50 kips per feet cube. I will apply the kips and feet unit system for other countries users and then uh, apply it to the model. There are different ways I can do this. The program has now represented icons for the springs and I would be able to inspect the value of these tables. If I want to modify or give it a quick inspection for each these values. So we see here the stiffness applied to the, all the nodes throughout the raft. So this is step one. Step two would be provide a support in the, in the other uh, directions. So if you are just applying these springs for compression only in the vertical direction, so we want to use springs that would support the, the other uh, directions, essentially fixing them. So we would come here and just say also these size springs. One could directly put this value set. You are going to fix all degrees of freedom except for the vertical direction. And I will again just come to this side view and select the same nodes of the page slab. And I just click apply. Depending on the loading conditions, such as program, does allow to you to create your load combinations. If you ever want to give a quick inspection and run it in this case, let's just compare what we have run this without any soil springs and the raft and just use the traditional method. Let's say fixed boundary supports to all the columns. After the analysis, we want to export this format to MXT file and we see here parentheses uh, FEA and GTS. So that is the 
the other platform where essentially the format that the program can read in the GTS NX. This is something unique to the family of MIDA software. So this is the text file that is created with all the nodes of information that would then be imported here. So all the information above the beams and the rows and other terms can be imported in the GTSNX. This is all yours and these are the input values of what we would be defining. I won't go through this the whole process kind of final model. We see here with this 3D solid cube, cube elements and each layer represented by different color having the values from the previous table. So let's take some general steps into how we can get the here at the program. So first thing we will do is to import the structure from a building software. We just created under the format mxt. We saw the text file which I have here. So I will select the first. This should always be the first step when importing. And we notice that we see some symbols. Let's fix boundaries conditions here at the bottom. And I can deactivate. Since my structure will be connected to the ground anyways, I don't need to fix column and some of the other representations we see here are related to the rows that were imported from the structures. So some of the road combinations are actually pretty hard to apply manually, but it is possible when we use MIDA software. Just import a finished 3D CAD file of terrain, geometry, 3D ground, and we see here obviously formation. We have it lined up exactly with where the structure is, but we already also divided this cube into my corresponding layers. And if I go to this geometry tab, I can deactivate. It is essentially where we would be extracting or creating the raft and the retaining walls. You will also notice that there are points corresponding to where the columns meet the raft. There is something that we have to have it done as a step that is very easy in print command that we have here that you will just basically be able to tell that imprint this column to the ground so that when the nodes match up between the 3D soul once I mesh with the corresponding location of the columns, those nodes being shared that can transfer information. So the subsequent step would be ready to mesh. We would want to give a quick inspection in terms of what we call duplicates in the program. Making sure that the program recognizes that there are layers in the contact in this case, we see here that there are because uh, they are showing up in orange. So this is key tool for meshing in 3D that makes it so much easier to, to verify that your mesh would be appropriately connected. We have very easy auto connect command that you can just correct in simple step. So now we are ready to mesh. And we have mentioned before that we have to import or define all the materials manually. What I can do is to import directly. This section imported from a building for, but I can do something similar and just import from the, from the other finished model or the corresponding rust of the layers 
that I need. So my raft materials as well as my soil layers, I can bring those in. So these properties now are imported that correspond to them. So we see here our soil and columns. And we will be able to start meshing. We typically recommend you start meshing from the inside out. It means that you start with smaller segments and you are going to essentially just choose the section of interest. And you would assign a corresponding material of layer to them and we will move them from the table and assign them value for the size of element. And then here you can choose. We can give this a preview of value. Just click apply here and let's say give it a name like this, excavation layer. And then just match them Subsequently, this would be other excavation, but this has different material value. And then we would continue this start meshing. Usually for the rust of the rayers, we give it a larger value. And we see that the program automatically, even though the other dimensions of mesh are bigger than the smaller original dimensions. The program has connected the different sizes to my corresponding layers and we would cruise this until we basically reach what the final model dimension is. We will finish the steps to mesh the rest. And I will just open the model that is finished with the mesh as we see here. In terms of the source. And what would be ready to do it now is look at more in depth to structure components. So I will deactivate all my layers except for the this excavate layers. And what we are going to do is actually both of these check on the CS and SAS uh, soul property and go to the extra element function in the dialog from the geometry we generate the detail meshes and you first select the face and then we can extract the meshes. I want to extract what is first the raft from this phase. And the program now matches existing mesh and then I would do the same for the walls and the basement walls. So far, that I essentially use extract command, we can either directly select from the meshes, so it's easier to just activate the sol solids. We have that uh, structure component taking care of the full structure with the walls and raft footing. Now that I have deactivated the geometry we see here, actually we want our raft to have, our walls to have interface elements. What is structure components in the soul, especially when there is difference in rigidity. So I will select my word and I'm going to actually do it 
by the method from shell element since this is the shell world. I will do the interface in both directions, select the nodes of the base. This will extract the local value surrounding source and we also want to create the rigid links for our raft since we are doing construction stage analysis. And then once we create that We can then proceed to apply boundary conditions and whatever loading conditions that we need. So in this case, the program, we can apply the constraints and boundary automatically. And although it might have been imported as a road, sometimes it's good to just reapply the essential gravity load. So now, we will be ready to run the analysis or set up the analysis and we will go to construction stage analysis set up our stage. I will open a finished model to just to save a little more time. So in this case we've created a construction stage analysis under stress and the stages are as follows. We have the initial ground layers with the rigid link that replaces the interface activated in the stage 1. We have applied boundary conditions with sulfate when we define the global water level. That is some other big difference between the structure points of the view is the springs. In stage 2, we excavate the ground and install the basement walls as well as interface elements. So far the case, we deactivated the CS1 part and the, and the rigid link. You are just clearing the displacement so that uh, our final results are only related to the structure components. Third stage is activating the raft and the fourth stage is activating the full building under the default mesh as well as the rows. And then we would just run the analysis, create an analysis case for the construction stage analysis which considered the water pressure role automatically. And if you want to apply K0 condition of the ground, just check on this area. And essentially, when we run the analysis, we look these results here given by stage. And we will be able to look at our total displacement. I can easily change the units to feet or inches. I can do actual deformation here. Well, as you are looking at more realistic values of up to 5 inches and the program also gives an output values directly to the structure components like the actual forces. And the moments and the, of course this would be compared directly to the other components. We can get the output just like Midas Gen for the superstructure. In conclusion, we've carried out soil structure interaction analysis using two techniques, the traditional indirect method where the structure is modeled in detail, but the soil model is represented with wrinkle elements, and the integrate direct method where they detail the models of the building and soil with 3D shape elements. The results of the FEM 3D model indicates that the total and differential displacement produced in the foundation slab are substantially higher than those obtained with the traditional method. In addition, the values of the bending moments and the actual forces in the building are different 
from those obtained with the traditional method. So based on the result, it is possible to conclude that the analysis of the structure with the soul applying the traditional model is conservative because the value of the reaction model is considered constant and usually a low value. It is important to study the static part of the soil structure interaction and the dynamic analysis for various case studies. SSI analysis will become more prominent in the future and it will be good alternative to uneconomical design. So far, we have explained how to get the behavior of building structure considering SSI. If you have any questions about today's topic, I will answer them in detail. Please email me. I would like to finish today's webinar. Thank you for attending our webinar and hope to see you. Bye.